Cedar chest part two. Okay, I've got my patch taped off here. And I'm gonna spray it with a little toner. And then I'll cover that with a little spray shellac to protect the toner. If I don't do this, just staining it, it's not gonna match the color well enough. So just a little shot of toner, nothing big. You know, if you spray too much toner, it acts like paint and it'll be totally opaque. That's not what I want. Just a couple of shots there will more than do it. I'll try to hold the camera and spray it at the same time here where you can see what's going on. You see immediately that changed the color. And immediately I think that's enough color. Boy, get around here to the light. Look at how that matches. Almost perfect. Okay, let that dry for a couple minutes and I'll do the same thing with a little shellac. And that will be done. Well, I put my Restore finish on. Immediately wiped it off, like the directions say. I've gone around to some of the edges and marked them with a walnut furniture repair marker. Every household ought to have a package of these. They're, they're inexpensive, I don't know, seven, eight bucks. And they've got maple, oak, cherry, walnut, mahogany, and black. And they really do a nice job on the little dings and scratches, especially on corners. Now I put on feeding wax. That's beeswax and orange oil. Let it set for 20 minutes, and then I buff it off to a nice shine, and the cabinet ought to be done. So it's just a matter of enjoying my coffee and letting the wax set up and dry a little bit. Mm. That new Admiral mug is really nice. It's been uh, two hours and the coffee's still nice and warm. Here's the case. I used Restore Shine and then I buffed it out with the wax. Does it look like brand new? No, it doesn't. I didn't want it to look like brand new. Does it look good? Yeah, it looks really good. Look at the legs, how they shine. It looks like a piece of furniture that's 90 years old. It's got a few love marks on it. That's been well cared for. That's the goal on a restoration. You know, I could have stripped this down to the bare wood and brought it back up and made it look like new. But that would not only decrease the value, but it wouldn't be the same piece. So, looking real good. Well, today's a new day. We went up to Cadron Settlement Park this morning. That video has already been posted. Icon at the end of this video. I wanted to take some pictures because if you go on the internet and look, you know, the place is supposed to be something really neat. about 70 miles from our house and it's really hard to find. Don't ask Google, Google won't tell you. And the interesting thing was we stopped and asked somebody that was from up there where it was at and they never heard of it. So Cadron Settlement Park is much there to be seen. But I'm making a short video to explain it all so you might look for that. In the meantime, I, we're back home now and uh, I'm working on the top here to 
to the Lane Cedar chest. And remember I had to put a, a patch on the veneer right there. And I've colored it, taken the color off and colored it and taken the color off about four or five times. And I still don't like it, but I'm going to leave it the way it is. Putting stain on is nothing to it. I suppose you could use a brush, but I like to rub it in with an old rag. And you just put it on. I like to go across the grain to get it down in the grain. But this is really the fun part of restoration. The stripping and the, all that stuff is sanding and all that is not a lot of fun. It's just kind of labor intensive. But when you start bringing the color out, when it gets fun. As the old boy said, <clears throat> this is more funner than the rest of it. And it's always good to take a little steel wool in places that you're not real happy about and rub them a little bit and try to get them to blend in. If you don't wipe it down, when it dries, it makes a sticky mess. You can't sand it, you can't. It's just, you almost got to strip it again if you don't wipe it down. And I mean pretty clean too. And if it's not the color you want after you wipe it down, well, either you got to change color or you got to do it again. Okay, this is walnut. I'm going to use the same rag. You can do that when you're going from light to dark. Golden oak is lighter than walnut. Walnut looks really dark, but it's virtually the same color tint as the golden oak. It just makes it a little darker. So you always want to start light and go to dark. Never try to go from dark to light. It just won't work. Once you put the dark on there, it's almost impossible to lighten the color. I think that's the nice, rich walnut color that we're looking for. Get me a rag that's not so wet with stain and wipe her down. When you're refinishing, the rule of thumb should be the final of anything is always with the grain. So my final wipe is with the grain, not across the grain. Now this is going to have to dry overnight. If I don't let it dry overnight, the polyurethane will lift the stain. And we don't want that. I don't want that at all. I like to make the spinal white with an old towel, old cherry cloth towel. But it picks it up better. And you can tell when you got it wiped dry, when 
you don't have a wiper on, it'll hang up as you're, as you're pulling your rag along. Well, I think that's got her, guys. So all that's left to do is be patient and wait. You know, the temptation is, like, it'll drive me, I want to put some stuff on there. Well, you won't get a good finish if you do. I'll just tell you that. I got a couple of new tools in the mail yesterday. They're called spoke shaves. They're a type of plane. And I was gonna, I've never used a spoke shave, so they're real nice for trimming up wood. And one's a flat bottom. That's for making nice, like on a board like this, nice smooth straight cuts. And the other one's a round bottom. That's for dipping in around. Uh, curves, making curves in a piece of wood. So uh, I just thought I'd try it out and see how well they work. I'm not expecting a whole lot. Uh, these are spoke shaves go anywhere from about seven dollars up to hundred and thirty dollars for the really top end. These are about twenty bucks a piece. So you know they're not super expensive. They're not real cheap either. No, I don't. You can't go against the grain with any kind of plane. You always have to go with the plane, the grain. Now it's not sticking out there enough, so I need to adjust it a little bit. So I'm gonna adjust it, and there's some adjustment screws there. And let's see what I can do with it. Obviously, I don't know what I'm doing here. I got one side of the blade set for a deep cut and the other side set for a shallow cut. So we'll see how that works. I think either I know. Hmm. Like anything else, it's not easy. I'm glad that wasn't a good piece. see I got some work to do so instead of you sitting there watching me struggle I'm gonna turn you off and practice well this looks like a good place to end part two of the cedar chest restoration don't forget thumbs up subscribe if you like them and as always I appreciate you watching so either get out your camera and keep your shutter clicking or find an old piece of furniture that you need to restore and get your hammer and nails out and go for it. Hey, thanks again for watching. Catch you next time. Bye for now.